Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. This is the differential out of my 2000 Acura Integra Type R. There's the transmission that it came from, and this is the car that it came out of. What I'd like to do today is take this thing apart and show you how it works inside. This is a limited slip differential. This guy here is an open differential, so this is what's in most vehicles. It's not limited slip. And the reason why we have these is so that when we take turns, the wheels can turn at different speeds because the inside wheel, when you take a turn, doesn't have to do as many resolutions as the outside wheel. So what this does is it allows for that to happen. So it allows for one wheel to spin different than the other. Unfortunately, this design basically sets it up so the wheel with the least amount of traction is what's gonna get the power. That's why that one wheel slips when you get stuck or on a slippery surface. It's this open differential design. Well, this system is designed to transfer power from the wheel that is not slip, well, the wheel that is slipping to the wheel that is not slipping, therefore giving you traction. Now, a lot of times they use clutches inside uh, of an assembly like this to lock up one side or the other, sometimes a mechanical assembly that actually physically locks things together. But in this case, these are helical gears. Basically what these do is as one side tries to rotate and the other side is spinning, these gears push out against the inside of this case and lock everything together. So it's, it's kind of a unique and interesting design. The drawback to this type of design is that once it wears out, it's worn out. You can't really do anything with it. Some limited slip differentials require the use of special fluid or additives to the transmission fluid in order for them to work properly and last their service life. This particular one from Honda, this helical style of limited slip differential does not require the use of any special fluids or anything, just Honda manual transmission fluid. It looks like it comes apart with these two Phillips head screws right here. This screwdriver fits in here really nicely. It's an impact screwdriver. And that wasn't all that difficult. It's held by the bearing under there. And these are plastic jaws that are inside my vise that help protect sensitive things like bearings. They're magnetic, I can take them on and off. Kind of cool. I'm gonna flip this over because all these guts and things are on the inside and I don't want them falling out everywhere. I'd like them to stay contained if I can help it. Oh, there we go. Okay, there it is. As I said, those gears inside here, as one side tries to rotate, and the other side goes in the opposite direction, that would be this guy here. What happens is, is those gears push out against the inside of this case. And over time, this, this wears out and that's why it needs to be replaced. Well, let's go further. Ooh, there's progress. So there's one gear. Right there. And here's the gear in the center. There's the other gears. Two types meshed in like this. And then it'll walk up when one tries to go in the opposite direction. So everybody's happy if they're all going in the same direction, but the minute the wheel starts to slip, it'll walk this up and force it against the inside of that, lock the whole assembly together, limited slip. And here's the other, other piece. that these two sit together like this. And then you've got your gears like this. So picture this one connected to one wheel, this one connected to the other wheel. One wheel starts to slip, it pushes on this. But if they're both rotating in the same direction, no big deal. Not until one starts to move independently of the other. Now there's a certain amount of differential action that this will allow. So you can take a turn and the wheels won't hop all over the place. But that's the whole reason you have a differential anyway. 
but this in times of uh, traction loss or to increase traction that's what this whole system is designed to do that is what is inside a type r limited slip differential Let's see if i can put it back together That is what is inside a type R differential. You might want to know how to test one of these differentials to see if it's bad. And according to the service manual, what you do is you measure the resistance, the rotating resistance with the front wheels off the ground in neutral and also in first gear. Compare the two and I think the difference should be at least 2.5 newton meters or more. If it's not, well, the differential's worn out and needs to be replaced. I hope you enjoyed it. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty.